Holy shit, communist gets tag teamed by two Nazis. Real life lore apology. California high speed rail project video was wrong. This video led him to delete it. California high speed rail is good actually. Yes, I do think it had some large problems in the beginning, but I still think it's a great project. What has mainly held it back is the project not receiving enough money in the first place. I know that sounds confusing, especially with some of the problems that it has had, but I'll explain this later. I've wanted to make a California high speed rail video for a while, but I've been Hold putting on. it off. Real Life's lore video finally sent me over the edge though. It's people like him that truly make this project have even more issues because of misunderstandings on what it's trying to accomplish. Anyway, let's dive into this and uh, oh boy, I have to talk about California. Okay, let's talk about what California high speed rail is trying to accomplish. The whole idea behind building a high-speed rail system came from the mid-90s when the state of California was reinvesting in its rail infrastructure. You see, the high-speed rail is important, but it was not the primary goal of the state at the time. In the 90s, California took pseudo-control over most of the intrastate Amtrak routes that existed, with the three big ones being the Capital Corridor, the Pacific Surfliner, and the San Joaquins. All three Goated. of these trains then feed into city centers where commuter trains, regional trains, and local services all connect. For the most part, California has achieved a massive improvement since the 90s in their rail system, locally and within the metro regions. But there's one thing that has always been missing, and it's a core backbone between the north and south metro areas. And that's where California High Speed Rail comes in. The High Speed Rail route is going to be California's backbone in a future where we need to lessen our hydrocarbon use. But before I address anything, let's move on to correcting this terrible video. I hate the trash on store brand Wendover, I mean real life lore too much, but this type of video where people outright shame Damn. California high school. Dude, he just, this is what happens when you say something about trains that is like not 100% accurate, dude. Reading him to filth, dude. He's literally just trashing him. Real life lore isn't even like that bad of a person overall, but he did the one thing that you're never supposed to do, and that is upset the train weebs, okay? Now, as I've said time and time again, Again, I think that we all know what I mean when I'm talking about like train weebs and people who really love trains. Obviously, I think, you know, we, we, we have a pretty good understanding of what I'm referencing when I say that. Okay. And I also personally think that it's a significantly healthier hobby for a lot of people and a significantly healthier hyper fixation for a lot of people than, uh, you know, anything else like uh, being in my fucking comment section, developing a uh, unhealthy hatred for what I have to do. Uh, be, be a train weeb. It's so much better better it's so much better than being a uh fucking weirdo 4chan like lol cow guy so you know do that instead but of, of course on the other side the inverse of this is that when you offend the train weebs they will come after you in a way that uh you have never seen before you've uh, never imagined before but i'm here for it i love that i love train drama speed rail because it's had problems getting started is way overdone instead let's talk about the issues that surround the project and the things that they're doing right but I have to use real life lore's video as an example because when you have a million followers, you can't just go, whoopsie, I made a mistake, while blatantly misrepresenting an entire region. But let's first cover what Joseph says about the chosen speed for the train in his video. A lot of it was pretty unrealistic from the start, specifically relating to the system's speed requirements. It specified that the trains operating on the lines must have an operating speed of 220 miles per hour. Bro, my man called him by his government name, dude. The gloves are fucking off, dude. Literally said Joseph. Like, he's like, is he gonna dox him by the end of this video? Like, what's going on? He's so mad. He's about to be like, uh, I, here's your IP address, by the way. We know where you live. Don't ever wow. fucking make the mistake of talking shit about trains ever again. There aren't any trains in the world that can economically operate continuously at a sustained speed of 220 
120 miles per hour. For example, in China, some of their quickest trains once ran at 217 miles per hour, but were later reduced closer to 200 miles per hour due to the hugely increased costs of running them continuously at those faster speeds. All right, one, I'm thinking of train nerds doing like train related discs being like, yeah, it's called the tro <laughs> like, yeah, here's a trolley problem. You're on the fucking train tracks. And guess what? I'm not a utilitarian. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Like, you better think twice, bitch. If you're going to make broad statements about railroad and trains, generally try not to be wrong or completely wrong, because if there's one group of people that know way more than you, it's train people. And I know this because I get corrected all the time with little bits of knowledge that I had no idea about. Also, dude, if you actually looked up the Chinese train you're talking about, you'd know that back in 2017, they put it back up to 350 kilometers an hour, which is 220 miles an hour again. It's currently running at that speed. Here's an article that talks about it. Also, I don't really understand why you think this is impossible. Yeah, if this was the average speed of the train, this would definitely- Can you be a train weeb and not be a China fan? I don't think so, right? Another reason to put respect on the names of train uh, fans. I love that. Correcting lies made by the Chinese- Lies made about the Chinese government? Definitely be impossible. But this is the track speed. Now, what is track speed? Track speed is basically the maximum allowed speed any vehicle can travel on that piece of track. The government goes in a little bit more depth to explain that there's actually classes of track that allow for different speeds to be authorized. But projects like California High Speed Rail can actually get waivers to go even faster than the maximum class on here. 220 miles an hour is actually just the modern standard for building track speed for high speed rail. Like you said, they build tracks like that in China all the time, and in Europe, you can find 220 mile an hour tracks in a few places. So what- Are you enjoying IDF versus World Press Simulator? Why- What is this guy saying? Saying like the IDF fucking does, uh, snipes? Yeah. No, I understand. He's making a joke. He's saying that the IDF snipes, uh, uh, uh press people. That's what he was saying. Once we actually have to hand it to California for He's trying right. to shoot above kind and of go gross, for the but... actual golden thing, instead of just shooting for for above mediocre or above status quo, unlike some other projects. But maybe that's the topic for another video. For the next part of Joseph's video, he starts talking about the route. This included a decision to take a detour from the original plan towards the town of Palmdale rather than routing the track more directly from Los Angeles to Bakersfield, a detour that cost an extra $5 billion, makes the total journey 12 minutes slower, and all for a town of only 150,000 people. Likewise, further to the north near San Francisco, it was decided to serve San Jose on the new main line with completely new track rather than utilizing the already built Bay Area Rapid Transit or BART system. Ugh, oh, man, I'm tired. Please give me a break. So anyone from the Bay Area immediately knows what the problem is here. BART is a rapid transit system. And not only is it a third rail running system that has a weird gauge, uh, has broad gauge, meaning it uses wide tracks. So that means that normal rolling stock would not fit on it. But let's give him the benefit of the doubt because he's a normie. Um, and we'll assume he meant Caltrain. Now, this is what- I love this man. No, he's literally like, you don't have my level of like neurodivergence, dog. Like- He's like real, he's like real life lore. You have no idea what you've just entered. You're in for a world of pain. I am going to dismantle everything you've said. Fucking normie. He said normie, dude. I love this man. I mean, I love real life lore too. I don't know who Alan Fisher is, but he seems fucking dope. He just absolutely loves, oh my God, he loves trains. Oh, dude. Oh God, he fucking loves trains and urban transportation. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, he's a train and urban... He's a train and urban transportation guy. It could go either way, okay? He could decide I'm like a fucking NIMBY or something and want to kill me. Hello, just want to drop in here. First of all, thank you for making this video. A lot of non-facts and misinformation slipped through the cracks of my usual fact-checking process for my video on the subject. Didn't come close to matching my standard of quality. And that's why ultimately I made a decision to take my video down permanently. And I'm working on a follow-up video to go over the errors that you and many others have brought up since went live. This subject deserved closer attention to my from my own eyes and I apologize for ever having released it in the condition that it was in. Damn!
Thanks for taking another look at it. The hardest thing is to admit fault. So hats off to you, dude. Fucking this one guy. One of those things that most of the news agencies and most of the normie channels don't talk about much. But one of the best <laughs> things that has happened with California High Speed Rail is that it's modernizing a lot of systems that it connects with, like Caltrain. Caltrain recently received overhead electrification at 25 kilovolts, which is the modern standard pretty much around the world. It's nice to see an American commuter rail finally adopting real electrification and good rolling stock that is in line with the 21st century. But I don't know where he got this idea that they're building a whole new main line from San Jose to San Francisco for California high-speed rail because they're just using the Caltrain main line. Uh, yeah, they have upgraded some stuff along it, including that's one of the things like electrification, but they're not building a new main line, nor are they building new tracks adjacent to the Caltrain. They're just using Caltrain and updating the corridor. But again, to reiterate, this is one of the main projects that they wanted to accomplish in the 90s when they set out to do the high-speed rail. It was not only the high-speed rail, it was a regional rail system throughout California that they wanted to integrate into the entire system. So they are achieving their goals. With that out of the way, let's talk about the Burbank to Bakersfield area that he talked about earlier. So we have to ask ourselves, why did the engineers choose that circuitous route? And no, it's not just because they wanted to go to Palmdale. Do you think this guy is just like, do you think this guy is trolling? Or do you think this guy is like legitimately deaf or something? Like, what do you think is happening? Or do you think he's just fucking trolling? Because it's like, I've already turned on the captions and he's still saying captions, please. Before I tell you the obvious answer, and some of you have probably guessed it already, let's take a look at the European high-speed rail network. So if you see purple and red, that means those are your fastest lines. And if you see yellow and gray, that means Means those are your slowest lines. All right, now let's do something interesting. Here's a European topographic map. That means that's it shows where the mountains are and stuff, whatever. Uh, now let's lay that over the high-speed rail network in Europe. Notice anything? Well, you can clearly see there are two areas in Europe with big mountains and they don't have any high-speed trains. This is because tunneling through mountains is a lot of money and if you want the project to be slightly cheaper, you're gonna avoid mountains. So if you look at a topographical map of California, you can see that, wow, they avoided the mountains. Oh, wow, shit. I could have never guessed that. So when people are like, oh, why did they choose the route that hits the inner cities in the center of California? Well, it's because going straight from San Francisco to Los Angeles would have been expensive as hell. All right, next Joseph talks about the part of it where it goes from Los Angeles to San Diego, aka the Surfliner Corridor. For instance, the team could have decided that rather than laying a brand new track between Los Angeles and San Diego, an already fairly popular route, the already existing Amtrak track there could have just been simply upgraded. This would have cut the total trip time by 60 minutes and provided an immediate impact to commuters along this route. However, the California High Speed Rail Authority decided to instead build an entirely new route, adding an additional $7 billion to the total cost. All right, first off, the route that he's showing for the Surfliner is very wrong. The Surfliner literally goes on the coast. That's why it has the name. And there's a massive problem because of this. You won't be able to get to San Diego by train anytime soon. Amtrak and Metrolink have canceled all trains for now after unusually high ocean waves have damaged the track in San Clemente. A track near the Cypress Shores neighborhood is described as unstable. It runs along the ocean over some sand. Because of safety concerns with this portion of the railway near San Clemente. Drone video shows high tides from last week that sent waves crashing onto the tracks. Officials are worried about the stability of the Okay, Loki, how sick would that be, though? If you're on a train and then you see a fucking wave crash into you? Oh, my God. I mean, it probably wouldn't be good, but, like, it would be sick to experience. That's all I'm going to say. Tracks <clears throat> and the cliff it sits on. Yeah, so the Surfliner right-of-way literally sits between the ocean and a hard place. And unless you're going to destroy the highway there, you're not going to have enough room to actually make the sweeping curves for high-speed rail. Now, do I think that the Surfliner corridor should be upgraded? Hell yeah, of course. And I think that eventually the corridor and everything along it should be straightened and electrified. But you're not going to ever get high-speed rail out of that corridor. Don't, don't joke with that. Okay, now let's talk about cost. You said don't joke with that. I love this man, dude. He's like, no joking on that one, dude. Okay, you, you fucking asshole. Some of us dream about these things. 
Yeah, he means business, dude. Do not joke. I feel like I just want to apologize to Alan Fisher really quickly. When I said it'd be cool to experience being on the surf liner, which I love. I think it's great. Um, It's beautiful and, and a very pleasant experience. I've, I've been on it. <clears throat> when I said it'd be sick to like get hit with a wave, I didn't mean any disrespect to the trains, okay? I'm so sorry. Please don't dox me. Please don't threaten my family. I, I just meant like it could be cool to like watch a, a wave hit the train as long as the train was not hurt in the process. Your ability to put stock videos over a script does not mean I have to take you seriously. God damn, dude. He's bouldering, dude. Nearly 14 years now since the passing of Prop 1A, the cost of the project has ballooned from $40 billion to nearly $100 hundred billion dollars due to delays, cost increases, and the slew of lawsuits thrown at the rail authority. Further, that one hundred billion dollar price tag is just for the San Francisco to Los Angeles segment of phase one. So let's first off look at something that's very similar to the California project, which is actually the original Shinkansen route between Tokyo and Osaka. Just like the California High Speed Rail project, the original Shinkansen was quoted at 200 billion yen, but it ended up doubling that to 400 billion yen. But the thing about that is that no one remembers that, and anyone that talks about the Shinkansen nowadays never even thinks about that at all. Like they just think, oh, Japan has a great rail network. Oh! There's, no, there's no like thought about, oh, back in the day, I can't believe this cost so much money. Well, the same thing with the California project, which is, yeah, there's cost overruns and there's stuff that sucks. But the thing is, is that once this is done, people will be like, oh man, California has a fantastic system. I can't remember when it, they didn't have this. But since we're on the topic of the actual cost of the project, why don't we talk about why the thing has cost so much or why it's going to cost so much. But to do that, I need to reach for a book in my cabinet. One second. Hmm, yes. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh, he's got Malcolm Harris? Okay. Okay. What does he got? State and Revolution, Lenin. Oh, this dude's awesome. Okay, never mind. Never mind. I take it back. Oh, all right. This dude is definitely. <clears throat> He's got 1987 George Orwin Animal Farm, <laughs> Animal Factory. And he's got The Man of the High Castle. No, but uh, Malcolm Harris is dope. Um, Anthony Padilla video, we'll watch that. Forget Lennon, bro got part one JoJo. I mean, JoJo part one's the worst JoJo, straight up. Like, I I'll, I'll fucking say it. I, I think it needs to be said, but it's okay. So I think it's uh, this one. Yeah, here we go. So today in book club, we will be discussing the book Contractors All the Way Down by the Armchair Urban. One of the main two reasons that American infrastructure is so expensive is that we outsource and outsource and outsource to contractors and different people different aspects of the project just continuously. And when you do that, every person in between has to make profit of some sort. And that's how you get ballooning costs. I will discuss in a future episode how you can kind of avoid this and uh, some political decisions you can do to avoid these cost overruns with infrastructure. The other issue of why a lot of America- Hopefully our next transportation secretary. If our next transportation secretary doesn't have autism, I don't want it, okay? There, I said it. The precursor should be that, okay? That's what the precursor for being the transportation secretary needs to be. I don't want it. Throw it in the trash. American projects end up going yeah over i say the boldest things that's right though because it's true you know it's fucking true because we're often building things that we haven't built in a the while or don't continuously build so there's often a loss of knowledge that has to be rebuilt as the project continues and we saw that with california high-speed rail sort of in the beginning when they had like the formation stage of like how to do the thing so literally you could say that some of the cost goes to the education of of learning to do this again or or just learning from someone else how to do this basically you can just say that some of your project money is going toward infrastructure education for future generations which is not a terrible thing also like i mentioned earlier i think one of the best decisions would be to actually to fund california high-speed rail even more like give it more money because one of the ways that you can actually save money in the long run is if you fund it in the first place and give it a lot of money at first so you can actually finish the project faster or finish the thing in a shorter amount of time this actually saves you money for two reasons one is that you pay people for less time like in general because you're finishing the project faster 
but also you have a like uh, almost like factory system where you can go through and finish this at a very fast pace versus just stopping it and then starting it again, stopping it and then starting it again, which wastes a lot of time and a lot of startup time. So there's one last thing that Joseph says that I want to go over. The only problem in California is that the CHSR is expecting that 75% of its writers will come. I would go so far as this is the one issue where like California state politics and its negligence is pretty apparent. And there is no like, what do I always say? There's no excuse for this. But what do I always say? Government is big. Government's necessary and government is expensive, which is why I don't mind fucking. No, not the get nukes thing. (laughs) No, stop. The government's big, the government's expensive, but the government is necessary, okay? So I I don't mind paying taxes, even if a gigantic fucking sum of that goes directly into the coffers of the police force so they can get like anti-personal landmines or whatever the fuck they need to make their tiny penises feel more competent. But having said that, a lot of that goes into shit like this. And some of these projects are not going to be for profit. Some of these projects are going to be riddled with, uh, you know, inefficiencies and whatnot. But ultimately, it is a necessity, okay? So my point always is like, obviously, I don't want like, I don't want the California government to get away with like, you know, giving Gavin Newsom's nephews like dumbass fucking contracts or whatever uh, is happening in this process. But having said that, of course, it's going to be expensive. It, of course, going to be more costly than you previously projected it, such as the nature of gigantic infrastructure projects. But guess what? It's an investment. Guess what? If California had a fucking high speed rail, if you want to think about it from a neoliberal economics perspective, okay, uh, a neo classical economist uh, would would have to still recognize that this is an investment that would make commerce significantly better in the state of California. There is no instance where better public transportation does not make commerce better. There is just not a single fucking instance where it it has uh, infrastructure spending does not pay dividends in return. Like literally from every perspective, infrastructure spending is good. It's so incredibly positive. Not from airline passengers, but from people who usually make <laughs> the journey by car, which historically has just not been the main demographic of people who sw- Wait, what? Is Trolley Tuesday? I love this guy. Wait, was that a Turkish one? I think he put a Turkish one in there. Oh no, that looks like a Turkish one though. I've been on those before. I've been on trolleys before. They're fucking sick. I think my love for I think my love for public transit actually comes from growing up in Ankara and Istanbul, where there's like significantly better public transit than is there like actual real cities? You know what I mean? Uh, in comparison to like the bitch ass, shit ass, dumb ass fucking cities that I. İki öncesi taksim ne abi? Nerede lan? Görmedim, kaçırdım yine galiba. Yo, hani nerede? Üstaçik var ona sonra trolleye bak. Hauptbahnhof. <coughs> No, there's someone in here that said Taksim. Uh, they were showing the Taksim trolleys, I think, but... Mulan. I mean, it's the NG Transit is pretty bad, but... Uh, better than nothing, I guess. More people would support public transportation if it didn't mean regular encounters with homeless? Dude, what the fuck? That's a crazy-ass fucking take, dog. Holy shit. It is the worst self-report I've ever seen in my entire life, dude. I mean, he's not, like... I get what he's saying. Okay, like I understand the energy behind what he's trying to say, even if he himself personally doesn't mean like uh, <clears throat> that simply isn't true about all spending in all countries when it comes to infrastructure. Sometimes you can have too much, literally just too much. So many videos by real life lore and polymatter on this exact same thing. Brother, we are currently watching a real life lore video that is uh, been so falsified, so thoroughly dismantled by Alan, uh, Alan, the train guy here that he like ha- actually ended up taking it down. So maybe, uh, you know, think about it twice next time you say, uh, uh, you know, uh, there's too much government spending because that kind of attitude is exactly what uh, leads to people trying to fucking cripple the funding of the U.S. Postal Service. There, there are certain things that we take for granted that we see as a necessity for survival that we never even consider. That's actually low key part of the reason why I really loved the Adam Conover government thing, even though it was kind of fucking. It was there was some cringe moments in it, but like like the the storytelling is cringe. But like I love the government. Okay, I love the government. It tears me up when I think about like all the fucking brave people working in the government day in day out through that fucking bureaucracy that go in and like finger fuck all of your goddamn uh, meat inside of a factory that you don't even think about i love the government and say so like there are dudes out there that are making sure that our fucking satellites are operating every fucking day so that you can use your phone okay you can use your phone and and take advantage of the gps without any
any consideration without ever thinking about who behind the scenes is operating the skeletons of that fucking entire incredibly complex system who built that infrastructure that's the kind of shit that gets me brick the fuck up okay i get horned the fuck up thinking about that shit okay and it's awesome and americans are fucking disgusting okay Americans are disgusting, slimy, hyper-individualistic hogs that never care for that. That never, even for a second, give consideration to, like, people that are in inspecting your water, okay? That's why I love when I go to, like, uh, you know, different parts of California. Uh, where is that? There, that fucking... I love going to, like, the, the fucking water supply or looking at the goddamn uh, electrical grid they put on top of a fucking mountain so you can jerk off to whatever kind of weird porn you want to jerk off to without ever uh, worrying about your electricity getting shut down that's the type of shit that i love and that shit's very expensive okay it's incredibly expensive and you bet your fucking ass none of these goddamn private corporations care enough to actually build that kind of utility to, to actually build that kind of infrastructure because they're constantly cutting corners as a matter of fact when the government's responsibility is outsourced to private corporations, as it often is in the United States of America, you get the PG&E type fucking monopolies that literally cut corners and end up causing wildfires, for example, because they refuse to fucking update their grid. They refuse to actually uh, clean up the lines, for example. So much, um, there's there's just so much negligence because there's so much corner cutting. There's so much, uh, uh, you know, profit seeking in that circumstance. I would much rather have that be public and I would much rather have that be expensive as fuck, okay? In order to make sure that it's always in operation. Or just not do a fucking thing like high-speed internet deal ISPs made with the government. Yeah, it just sucks. Government services shouldn't and don't need to make a profit. We can easily fund everything we need. I agree. And I love that. I love that. And I get very mad at the government. Usually when it doesn't regulate adequately. I get very mad at the government like the FDA. I love the FDA, but I also hate the FDA. When it refuses to fucking... When it refuses to like, you know, provide ample coverage over... As, uh, over like Abbott, for example, creating baby formula. When it is the regulatory mechanism it's supposed to you get a whistleblower you're supposed to not go in there once a fucking year and check and be like oh chronobacter i guess this looks like uh i guess we'll wait for them to self-report they're never gonna self-report you need to go the fuck in there and be like we're doing a thorough sweep of this entire fucking factory and we are going to sue you so goddamn hard that like your insides are gonna come out you're gonna be bleeding from your fucking ears i'm gonna make the executives fucking cry i'm gonna make by the time i'm done with this fucking company okay your executives are gonna try to sell their first born children a sacrifice to the fda that's the kind of attitude that the government should take when it comes to you know properly enforcing its, its its regulatory powers but of course they're feckless these institutions are still capitalist in nature there's a revolving door between the fda and abbott and numerous other fucking lobbying firms along the process but you know you can make it better i do make it better I, I do believe that the government serves an incredibly important purpose and that's why i love the government and that's why i get bricked up when i think about infrastructure and also remember don't be a piece of shit who actually doesn't uh, uh ever care or consider the the brave little soldiers behind the scenes that work incredibly hard jobs that are doing thankless work all day every day when you fucking jerk off the cops or the military or whatever the fuck when in fact it's the government that's like making this shit run which to using high speed rail yeah but your demographic numbers are coming from europe where they actually have good transportation in the first place in the u.s we are stuck with cars we have to drive so like if someone has the option to take a train instead of driving yeah they're definitely going to do that especially because the i-5 corridor in california is like notorious for being terrible with traffic also there's an estimated 21 million trips made via car between los angeles and san francisco a year and that sort of brings us into my next topic if you don't have it already there should be an extremely loud clock in the back of your head that's going tick tock like really loudly and that's the climate change clock this thing is relentless and it doesn't stop and as we continue into the future it just gets louder and louder one thing that I really do applaud California is that they actually have a plan on how to go into a sustainable future and they're already building the infrastructure for this. Now, some of their laws are very much a grift, like the plastic straw thing, whatever, but the California High Speed Rail is a great physical, tangible project that is actually really meaningful in the large scale of things. 
Electric cars will not save us, and I have a whole video on that here. But building sustainable transportation and then building cities around that transportation is the way we're going to save ourselves. Now, California high-speed rail is just one piece of the puzzle. All the other pieces are coming together, hopefully. Uh, but another one is like Caltrain and the electrification that comes along with California high-speed rail. And there's no excuse for other states not to do something similar. The state that I'm currently living in, Pennsylvania, could easily electrify from Harrisburg to Pittsburgh. Oh, he fucking follows me. Oh, God, he's a proud New Jersey native. <clears throat> he also makes the Armchair Urbanist series. Oh, that's why he put up New Jersey Transit. I was wondering, because, like, I've never seen anybody be like... I've never seen anybody fucking rep, uh, you know, uh, New Jersey Transit, like, likes you? Yeah, no, I, I saw... Oh, he's like... Oh, he, he he's, uh, <laughs> he's saying thanks for dragging him about uh, Adam something as of something <laughs> okay he's like he's not one of those like fucking some of the urbanist heads some of the fucking um you know urban sprawl heads and public transit heads get a little socked at me for me for my taste and then turn into like uh the the as of something andes you know what i mean but i was a little worried but then i saw state i saw lennon and i was like okay i'm not no i'm no longer worried <clears throat> I do want to point out that, like, pumping the fucking pro Azov Ukraine takes is no different than, like, Asmund Gold literally doing nonstop coverage over, uh, you know, and, and turning his channel almost entirely over to, like, a Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial series. That's exactly what Azov something did. Except, like, Asmund Gold, when he did that, was not actually, like, uh, unironically defending Nazis in the way that, uh, uh, you know, Adam something was. True, sure picked up a bunch of fucking weirdo, uh, weirdo people, though, in line with that. Um, you said there is no Turkish trams on that vid a couple of videos ago which isn't true there was a Taksim tram two seconds before you said so as a Turkish Canadian I really despise you Lamont wait what the fuck what do you think I'm not like you think I'm unaware of the Taksim tram like I, I've been on it to by anyway guy's awesome but they just don't so again I really think that California has to get more praise than it's getting because yeah it's had a lot of fundamental issues when California high-speed rail initially started but they're on the right track and it's the right thing to do and I think more people should harp on that because it's really undersold, especially channels. Have you taken a train like to San Diego? No, I've taken a train from San Diego. I took the I took the Surfliner from San Diego to Cal, uh, Los Angeles. It was awesome. And all of the other media outlets that just like to bash this thing with no like other praise of any sort. So to close this video out. Yes, I think California High Speed Rail is a good project. Yes, I think it should get more funding, but I think that there should be more consideration on how it integrates itself with more of the systems around California. Yes, I think there was problems in the beginning, but I think most of them have been ironed out at this point. I'd like to thank you for making it through this video because uh, that was a lot of energy about California. Uh, but thanks to all my Patreons for keeping these videos alive. And this was awesome. Uh, folks, this was, uh, this was the armchair urbanist aka alan fisher uh great represent your new jersey roots we made you dude no shot dude no fucking shot i don't even know what he's talking about that's his worst take is like openly stating he's a proud new jerseyan <laughs> hey if you like this video please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos <laughs>